hugs and kisses on my toodles. Hey guys, it's Sunday, and I'm going to go ahead and start reading in chapter 10 of The Great Issue. I'm not feeling too good today. I got massive heartburn, so, so if we can't get this book and this thing on the road and start reading, we are almost done. This is how much we got, if you can see, right here to read, so that's not a lot. So let's get into it. Getting off the circle. What do you mean when I talk about legacy? I mean the things you do that have a real effect on your future generation. Every one of us leaves a legacy of some sort. Maybe it's a small legacy like a recipe or a story that gets passed down from generation to generation. Or a movie to a different or, or move to a different different town that puts your family roots down there. It's possible to pass through this life without having some impact on others. And that impact travels forward even if it's only a little way. Alright. As long as people are still making your aunt's pies and talking about the time your second cousin played against Bill Russell or telling your friends about when your great-grandfather decided to settle in Tulsa. Their legacy is alive and touching others. For me, I've been doing a cookbook and I picked up a notebook and actually I won this off of what is that group called? It is like I can't think of the name of it, but I used to go on there and I win auctions all the time. And you didn't play with money, you play with credits. So the credit will win that for you. And um, anyway, so the deal with that is I won this little notebook, beautiful small notebook, kind of thin. I don't have one that looks like it anyway. Close but I started writing recipes down, things that I done myself and came up with, some of my mom's recipes, recipes that I make, that my kids actually like, my husband likes, and I'd write them down in this book. And each one of my kids is going to get this book, but, I mean, not each one of them is going to get the book, but one of my children, the first one to get married, when I die, will get that cookbook. And I've been writing recipes down, and I just did a, my best friend gave me an idea. You take a whole chicken, put it in the crock pot with a whole bunch of seasoning, and cook it, and I did. And let me tell you, it was, it fell off the bone. It was that good, it fell off the bone. I told my husband, I said, that's dinner tonight, I don't have to cook. Because I did the chicken yesterday, but he went out to... I cannot stand Chick-fil-A, but I love Chick-fil-A salad, so he bought me a Chick-fil-A salad and as him, and we ate that for dinner last night, which was so sweet of him. I love my husband for that, but I still cooked the chicken, and we're going to eat some chicken tonight, so that's pretty good, so something like that would be good. My mom, when she passed away, she had a whole bunch of old school coins. And she divided it up between all three of us kids. Well, my brother really didn't, my second brother didn't understand it. So, um, but I got some of it, what I could get that my mom had in her jewelry box. But I think most of it went to my sister-in-law. But that's okay, I'm not mad, I'm not worried about it. But other than that, it's pretty good. Then of course, there are the negative legacies. I know two, oh wait, I know far too many people who are dealing with the negative legacies left to them by abusive or neglectful presence or social criticism that produced them to be function. Even if this isn't your situation. I'm sure you heard the story too. The guy who beat his wife and kids grew up in a house 
a house where his father beat his his wife and kids, the person who depends on drugs and alcohol to get through the day, comes from a long line of people who did the same thing. This person who settled for unchallenging jobs rather than trying to be great from the household where she learned that ambition was for other people. As me growing up, my mom always waited on my dad hand and foot. And I always thought, okay, you got to wait on your man hand and foot and do everything for him. My ex-husband used to say, I used to have dinner and he'd say, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'll get my own food. My husband now, I will get his dinner for him and take it to him. But there's times when I do make dinner, like the other night I made pancakes, bacon, eggs for dinner. Oh my God, I was craving pancakes so bad. Something fierce, I had to have pancakes. I was craving pancakes and... So I made that, and he ate. He, I said, there's pancakes, bacon. I couldn't finish mine. But my husband said, I'll eat your bacon. I'm not supposed to have bacon, but I cooked me three pieces of bacon. I ate two. <laughs> I said, I can't eat no more, honey. I'm just full. So since my dog, Noel, passed away, and we usually feed her the scraps. My husband calls her our just garbage disposal. And instead of throwing food in the trash... We do that. Well, I did throw some stuff in my trash in my office, some food, but and some in the in the trash in the bathroom when I was eating my salad last night. But anyway, things change, and now he says, "Oh, you can you know do it to the plants and fertilize the plants with like those food." And I said, "You know what? No. Uh, excuse me. We got animals in the backyard. They can eat." All right, anyway, you hear about the cycle all the time, the cycle of houses or cycle of commercial dependencies when people, <coughs> excuse me, when people talk about these cycles, they are talking about negative legacies. Since you come to this book, there are Descendant chances that you, your, default with the same of this in your own life. Maybe your father smacked you around. Maybe your mother was always telling you that you had to set your sights low. If you look back, a few generations, you'll probably discover that your mother and father had experience similar to one they're exposing you and their parents difficult with the same thing. I've seen movies where parents expect their children to go to Harvard or go like law school or go to Stanford or go to a high, high society college and make something of their life. And I've seen where kids are good at what they do in life, you know, and they're real good at it, but they don't go to college. And, you know, I wanted my boys to go to college. I wanted my kids to be something in life. And they weren't doing nothing in life. Well, my husband... The one I have now. He has always put both of my boys down. They're going to mount to nothing. They're not going to be nothing. They're not going to do nothing. Well, so my boys really, my oldest son, shocked the shit out of me and my husband. Because we both, my husband and I thought he was going to live with us forever. And he's handicapped. He's got cerebral palsy. He has his own apartment. And... He lives in Arizona. He lives in Stafford, Arizona. Has his own apartment. Has his own money. Doing good. And he's actually going to college to be a photographer. Shocking, right? My second son. He has 
well, we didn't think he was going to, my, my husband thought he was going to live forever and be a couch potato and go from, you know, place to place to place and sleep. He lives in Huntsville. He's got his own apartment. He's a manager at Wendy's. And he's a manager at Jack and a Crack. Oh, well, it's Jack in a Box, but we call it Jack and a Crack. <laughs> and he's doing good. And he's got more money in his bank account than I've got in my bank account. And I'm proud of my boys. And I look at him one day and I said, Hello, excuse me. What did you say about my boys? That's what I thought. Look at your daughter. No job. Her friends are more important than work. She's a freeloading off of her boyfriend. His family. He doesn't have a job. She don't have a job. But they want the land that you're buying from your brother. And they can't even afford anything they sell. And my husband told me last night. He says. Well, I was talking to him about it. I said, you need to talk to your daughter and say, if they want that land, you're not going to buy it. You're not going to get it put in your name. You'll buy the land, but you're going to have it put in your daughter's name. And she has to pay the taxes. And anything that goes on there, she has to deal with that. Not us, her. Make her learn responsibilities because she hasn't yet. Yes, I know my son, my youngest son did drugs. He's a pothead. So is my son's daughter. She's a pothead. I hate drugs. And I think anybody who does drugs or anybody that sells drugs should actually go to prison for life. Or at least for a year. Prison for a year. Maybe that'll get, make them realize the more you do drugs, the more jail time you get. Or prison time. But is it going to happen... I don't know. Only person that can make that happen is Donald Trump. Peace, Donald Trump. We love you. But about how much of effort does negative legacies have on you? How much have you been held down by them? How hard have you had to fight to overcome them? Then ask yourself this question. Why would you ever want to impose on someone else? Okay, my ex-husband told me, I don't love you no more. I want a divorce, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to get rid of you five years ago. I'm tired of your BS. You're, 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 you're holding me back. You're holding me down. He was saying negative things about me. But he did say some positive things about me as well. He says, don't worry, honey. When I leave, you'll have your new man in a heartbeat. You're a gorgeous woman. What man wouldn't want to be with you? you got a big heart. You're loving. You do have a smart-ass attitude. But you'll be good in life with somebody else. We're just not meant to be. Okay. Just like in, in junior high, I had a crush on a boy. And he came to me one day, and he knows who he is. And if he ever watches my videos, I'm not going to mention no names. He told me we were better off as friends than lovers. And he told me he, I'm like a sister to him. Oh, well. And life goes on. Why would you ever want that to be a legacy? A big part of the work we've been doing in this book has been about coming to terms with the legacy. You've been left. You can make the concision directions have those negative legacies ended with you. If you've left any negative you know, I, I know I always said, oh, Bree's not going to make it to be anything. Uh, we both think she's going to be going from place to place and staying. She wants to get married to the boy she's with on her 20th birthday. I don't think, you know, I don't think she's going to get married. 
But you might fool me. But there's things, you know, you just don't think. And it's like, you know, she, she wanted me and her dad to get split up so bad. She didn't want us together after a while. She tried everything in her, in her willpower to get me and her dad to get a divorce and her dad to leave me. She told her dad there was a man in the bedroom. He was a little chunky. He had bald hair and stuff like that. And come to find out. It was my brother over, and when my husband said, does he got shaved head and he's kind of chunky, he said, it's about yay tall. She goes, yeah. Oh, well, did you go say hi to your uncle? She got pissed off. And every time, she even, her dad was with a friend, his best friend, and they were up there at the lots, and she called him and said, Dad, I was at Mom's. Mom got arrested. I had to come back to the house. Christina's got a man in the bedroom and bed, and she's having sex with him. They're doing shit. Well, my husband knew it was a lie. He said, oh, really? And does he sound like this? Because I can hear his voice. And so she put, he put the phone up to his friend David, and does it sound like this? What? And it was David, a friend of our David. I was on the other line with David, and that pissed her off because she could not get what she wanted. And she has stopped now, and she knows it's never going to happen. Legacies are a lot like relaying races. Sometimes the people run the face before race. Sometimes people run the race before you will leave you in a great position to win. As for my stepdaughter, she'll sit there. Instead of cleaning her room and looking for what she says is missing, Dad, I know Christina's been in my room. She took this, this, and this, la, 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 and she has it. And I know if you see it, get it. And so my husband says, well, if you clean that room, you'll probably find it. And numerous of times she has cleaned that room and she has found exactly, exactly what she is looking for. Amazing. But does she ever apologize to me? Hmm. No. There's a really good chance that this is where you were when the vision was passed to you in your life. Now you have a handful of choices. You can jog the race out, deciding that you're too far behind to even catch up. You can push to gain around and give the next runner a better shot. Or you can be the race who runs the race completely different level and pass the petition over with a huge lead. Which of these sounds like the best scenario to you? Since you've gotten this far in this book, I think I know the answer. So let's talk about what that means. And my, um, Tuesday, we'll get into the gift of the great legacy. And we'll read that Tuesday and get into to that. Um, so until next time, I hope to Let's till next time. And I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified of any videos. Like, comment, and subscribe until next time. Bye guys.